Hi, I'm Robin Hall and this is my studio. Uh, it sits in my home on the second floor. It's the only second story room in the house, so it keeps me isolated from whatever's going on downstairs. I, it's a small space, but I've tried to organize it so that it accommodates all of my frames, my canvases, my oils, uh, I have a sink here, and um, I'm comfortable here. So when I was growing up, my mother was an artist, and one of the key features I think that I remember as a child is that there was always the smell of turpentine since she worked in the kitchen and she had three easels. We had a very large kitchen, so she kept three easels going in the kitchen at all times. And it was just uh, that smell that when I got older and decided to kind of play with paint a little bit, the turpentine was kind of the key to uh, bringing back a lot of memories. But most of what I remember is that I decided early on that I was never going to be an artist. Um, I saw kind of the lifestyle of my mom and I put that at, on a, kind of on a table that if I ever wanted to paint, it would be for fun. It would never be for uh, as a profession. And then of course, here I am. Uh, but uh, I think that sometimes things that you're meant to do or because you have an interest in something, it always brings you back to that subject again. And I think doing something that you really love as a profession is probably the key to being happy. So when I started painting uh, years ago, probably, over 30. Uh, I, well, actually I started painting from photographs and plein air was just beginning. So I took uh, a workshop in Santa Fe and went, you know, told, we had to talk about ourselves a little bit. And I said, oh, you know, I paint from photographs, but my work looks like plein air. And the instructor immediately said, no, it doesn't because he knew that unless you're out there working on location, you never have a clear grasp of what happens in the open, how, how things diminish or uh, how atmosphere, how water affects uh, the moisture in the air, uh, what happens when the sun's setting or um, capturing the correct values of your shadows. All those things are so important for being out on location. And so that's how I started. And yet now I carry that information, paint a little bit more from photographs, but that's the key is to be outdoors and painting to learn. So I'll take you through a little bit of my studio. I have my wooden supports up here. That is where I stretch linen and paint on those. And then an assortment of a couple little tiny easels, which are kind of uh, interesting for uh, if you're going to be working, say, on, off of a table. But then I have, uh, I've kind of compartmentalized my, all of my frames. My darker frames are over here. And then the, these over here, which are uh, 22 karat uh, hand gilded gold frames. So I like to hang my frames so that they're not on the floor, they're not rubbing against each other or on a surface. And that way they uh, stay a little bit more pristine. And then I have on this wall a few paintings that I'm currently working on. Uh, not, not every painting ever makes it into a frame. A lot of times I get an idea of what I want to paint 
and sometimes it doesn't quite come out the way I want it to, so it ends up in my trash can. But, you know, one of the things about being an artist is that if you don't push yourself to try things that are different, a uh, little bit out of your normal um, comfort zone, then you never really grow, I think, uh, artistically. So currently I am working on this painting and it is a 36 by 48. This easel has accommodated, um, I think the biggest that I painted is a 48 by 72. It's great because it allows you to move up and down. It's all counterbalanced or you can slide it so that wherever you're working, you still have access to your palette and you're not having to do those leg squats or climb a ladder to get to the top of your canvas. So anyway, I love this. I, I had this one built. It's a little different than uh, what Hughes normally uh, puts together. This has a double mast on it with a single footprint. So where it sits on the floor is a little bit smaller, but it allows for a much larger canvas to be on it. And then I built this uh, palette. It uh, is, you know, so that I had a bigger space to work on with a, a gray um, uh, bottom to it. And then, you know, everything is right here where I need it. Uh, this has, seems to work out pretty well as far as like height goes. It's really probably a microwave table with this um, top that I built. So a couple favorite things that I have in my studio. One is the bust of my father. My mother created it and I was probably seven at the time that she did it. So it's kind of a little nice uh, remembrance of both of them. And then also in my studio, I have a couple, you can't see that one, but I have some paint by numbers, which are something that in our childhood was how we kind of segued into art. I remember as a child coloring in all the little segments with the correlating numbers and um, it probably didn't influence me to how I paint today, but it was certainly something that we all did as a child that made us feel like, you know, we were an artist uh, with a completed painting. And then this particular piece right here is one that I am still working on. Uh, I think it's a good idea for an artist to put something in a frame as it's getting toward completion so that you can see if the balance is really correct. And I feel that over in this lower left-hand portion of the canvas that probably I need to have something with a little bit more activity. So. And then over in this corner here is my area of skeletons and bones. And that is uh, something that interests me. I don't know why, but uh, anytime that I find bones or my husband has found some great bones, um, it's kind of like it becomes a gift, so. Thank you for taking this time to look at my studio, my work, and I hope that you'll stop into Rogers Gardens where everything is on display and you'll find some inspiration there.